Welcome to the Splash Us Ass Podcast. I am your host, Amy Quinley. This is the unofficial Jeff Lewis Live After Show. For now, as we know, this is actually the last episode that my recaps will be focused on Jeff Lewis Live. It's still going to be the same podcast, same host, same me, just a different show to recap. And I will now focus on the Pete and Sebastian show once a week with new episodes released Wednesdays instead of five days a week of JLL. Although it's genuinely been so fucking fun to recap the past four weeks and I'm forever grateful for all who have listened and we're just gonna keep baby stepping to success together. Okay, from the JLL show yesterday, we learned how to properly manifest. So I would just like to say that I have... I have a successful podcast, and I feel good vibes for all of our futures. Who's with me? Woo! All right, let's move on. For Jeff's episode, we have so much to talk about today, but it is only right that we start Jeff's final episode off with one of his favorite subjects, a trip to the urologist. Uh, It was not me. It was not me, but this is so random. Yesterday, my neighbor was telling me, TMI, TMI, but... This is why his grass is a little not as green as the rest of us because he is busy inside of his house hosting eight kidney stones inside of his stomach. (laughs) You guys, this fool has eight fucking kidney stones inside of him. Eight kidneys. One of them is too big to pass, so it needs to be surgically removed. And I was like, oh, so when they surgically remove that one, are they going to take all eight out? And they were like, yeah, if it doesn't pass, some don't pass by then. Oh my God. What do you mean pass by? How long are we waiting for this surgery? Once I find out eight kidney stones, okay, today's the operation, doctor. I picked today. I picked today. We're not waiting next week. I don't have room next Friday at noon. I need today eight kidney stones out of me. How do you even get eight? How does it take you going to the, uh, what is it? How were eight kidney stones formed inside of you before you finally went to the doctor? We talked about this on JLL actually yesterday with Sarah Foster about people ignoring medical things. How did you not know? Well, number one, two, three, four, five. How did it take to up to eight to form? I have so many questions. I don't know. Kidney stones. We talked about UTI shit too. I'm glad. Thank goodness. I have many problems. Those aren't some of them, but oh my God. So Jeff, I know that we haven't talked about the urologist in a while and you seem to be doing great in that aspect of life, but I just had to share that because I didn't want to know it and I can't unknow it. So now we all have to know together. Also, Wicked Quick, I watched Watch What Happens Lives with Tinks, Tinks, and James Kennedy. So fun to say, which of course we know that Tinks records her show right down the hall from Jess, Jess, Jess Lewis Live. <laughs> Oh, you're going to miss me, Jeff, aren't you, Jess? Um, From Jeff Lewis Live, and I had never even seen a picture of Tinks before. I had never even seen what she looks like. She is so cute. Oh, my God, she has Dua Lipa vibes for sure, for sure. But I wanted to bring this up for one reason alone. I talked about this on a previous rant in my podcast, but they did a shot ski. And I talked about this, I think, Wednesday. But Andy screams into the first, can we talk, uh, should we not talk about Andy's beard or what, what, what is, ha- uh, I shouldn't say anything, right? Cause JLL's on radio Andy, but <clears throat> okay. What's going on there? Anyways. So uh, if you don't know what I'm talking about, just watch any, any watch what happens live from this week and explain to me what is happening on a face. Okay. So. Andy screams into the microphone or into the camera. I'm screaming into the microphone, screams into the camera that DJ James Kennedy was drinking water, water. Woo. Yeah. We know he's fucking sober. What is the deal with sober people and water? What is it? Is Andy Cohen on Skid Row or is he a multi, multi, multi fucking millionaire? Can he not afford a shot of lemonade for a sober guest? A shot of iced tea? 
A shot of coconut water? A shot of motherfucking Gatorade? Anything besides water. Why is it always water, water, water? Daughters. Teresa and her daughters drinking water. We get it. You're sober. Congratulations. You're allowed to drink other motherfucking liquids besides water. Water. Why not partner with Shannon Bedore's Real to Real? Do the lemon shots or her wellness shot. Or do ginger juice for these guests. Do celery juice. You cannot tell me that all the sober people just want water. Like, is this a sober person thing? Is this a camera? Like, is this a Bravo thing? Why is it water? Why is this a thing? And Andy does this all the time with the shot ski. Michael Rappaport drinking water. Lala Kent drinking water. What the fuck? Get Lala a shot of milk. We know how much she loves her bottle. Just be fucking fun. Like, don't be all unfun, okay? Remix to Luann. Like, I get it, Luann. I get it. It's just uncool that why are, what's the, what is it about water? And why does Andy have to be like, well, they're drinking water. Fucking pour some Gatorade. Give him some electrolytes. Perk that bitch up, okay? Like, we get it. You're sober. Congrats. There's other liquids in this world besides alcohol. Ah, all right. Welcome. Wow. Happy Saturday. Sassy Saturday for sure. So let's just dive right into Friday's April 28th episode of Jeff Lewis Live. We had Sarah Foster. We had Megan Weaver. And we had Shaney Shane Douglas in the first part of the show, Sarah provides the most relatable moment, most relatable moment in Jeff Lewis Live history. Like literally everybody that was listening, all the listeners stopped for a second and they were like, Sarah, same. We're with you, girl. We're, we're with you. Sarah was offered to either go to college or to model in Paris. College or Paris, college or Paris. Um, I did both. I'm a humble brag. Um, definitely not the modeling part, but <laughs> I did go to college and I did study abroad and we did a two and a half backpacking trip through five. We did 10 cities, five countries, and it was two and a half weeks and we only had about five pairs of underwear. You do the math. There was a lot of like inside out rinsing in hostels. I don't want to talk about it. Those were some dark times, but the best of times and the worst of times. So many crazy shit. But Paris, this might be a hot take. Paris was absolutely not my favorite. In fact, I really did not enjoy it. I did not. I had big sunglasses on and I have long hair. It's strawberry blonde. So kind of blondy and it depends on sunlight. You know, I'm a chameleon. And so you know, all of a sudden a fly just goes by and my tongue just snatches it out of nowhere. Um, okay. So in Paris, uh, was oh yeah they kept calling me Lady Gaga like all these they're Lady Gaga Lady Gaga and I'm like pa 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 paparazzi wasn't that her song pa 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 poker face oh right okay oh. Anyways, um, so also in Paris, there were these groups. Okay, so there would be groups of women and then groups of men. And like the men, they would be trying to tie bracelets onto you. And if they successfully tied one on, then you had to pay them for it. Like you were somehow swindled into now owning this bracelet. And you're like, I had no idea what was even happening. And they also do this with pictures. Like they'll snag you for a picture and then be like, now you owe us 10 grand because we are worth 10 grand. And you're like, what kind of math is this? And also the woman, they would be like, ah, the adoption, my child is in foster. I, we came from a village together, sign this piece of paper. And then you would be signing away your first unborn child to them. It was wild shit. I was not a fan. I also could not afford much. We were balling on some hardcore budgets. So maybe if I was like, like Emily and Paris, Amy and Paris, it'd be different. And, or if I was Sarah fucking Foster, it'd be very different. But uh, Sarah ended up moving on from modeling to acting. She got a movie with Owen Wilson and Morgan Freeman that none of us have ever heard of. Flomp, flomp, flomp. So Sarah passed on the box office success known as Girl Next Door and instead did another flop movie. And Sarah asked if she's boring everyone and Megan go <laughs> And Megan goes, "No, no, no. I loved the Girl Next Door." 
<laughs> oh, Megan, you mean the movie that Sarah didn't do? The one that she passed up on? That's the one you loved? <laughs> it's so classic. No, I literally love it. Again, talk about foot and mouth syndrome. This is just the story of my life. But piano, we had to play piano as kids for fucking 10, 15 years when I never graduated past a level three book. Talk about that in there. Like, what? Okay. So, <laughs> I haven't graduated past level three in many things in life. And so hence me doing a Jeff Lewis live now Pete and Sebastian show after show podcast. Okay. So at this piano recital, my sister was singing and doing piano. And this was her first time singing in front of everyone. Honestly, I think my voice is better, but who am I to judge except a little sister and judge Judy. So she was doing Vanessa Carlton, 99, I would walk a thousand, ew, I'm like 99 miles, <laughs> I give up, and she was willing to walk a thousand, again, why some people deserve success, so you go, Vanessa, you walk those thousand miles, get your steps in, and so, um, when we, so then another girl at the recital randomly was also doing piano and singing a Vanessa Carlton song too, and so when we were leaving um, I was like the stadium because clearly we were top billing at this hole in the wall piano studio. No, we were leaving this weird warehouse and I was trying to tell my sister what a great job she did. And she was like, yeah, but somebody else sang Vanessa Carlton too. And I was like, yeah, but she wasn't even good. She was like, I, I don't want to. And I started like singing extra breathy and stuff. And she was like, Amy, that's the song I did. And I was like, oh shit. Oh, damn. Yeah, no, you're right. That other girl was better. <laughs> you were a little breathy on that part. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Oh, my God. I swear I'm a gem. Oh, my God. Speaking of gems, this is my favorite thing to have ever happened in Jeff Lewis's world. This is literally my favorite thing to have ever happened. Aurora. I love you, girl. Aurora vacuumed up Jeff's Louis Vuitton book. <laughs> I, you guys, you guys, <laughs> just the image of somebody vacuuming up a book in the first place, it just is fucking hilarious to me. And then she broke a Monroe picture frame or something, and just like, she was petrified to tell Jeff, because... And Jeff gets so mad because everybody does the same thing to him, which is not tell him full truths. There's always holes in the story because they don't want his reaction. So with Aurora, he had to pull it out of what was actually just like they had to pull out the pages of the Louis Vuitton book out of the vacuum. But Stu did the exact same thing to Jeff with the car bumper, not telling him the full story of what happened there. And... I don't know. Look, I get it. Like, it's not right to withhold info because you're scared of other people's reaction. You know, like Aurora and Stu, you should just tell him full, full story, full story straight up right away. Jeff, your reaction does affect people. You know, like you can't, actions have consequence, whatever. I'm just saying that when I did this growing up, I was Aurora and Stu and I learned to lie at such a young age, which again, talking to psychiatrists and therapists and uh, philosophers of the ages, philosophic, phil, philosophers, phil, philosophers. Oh my God. No, I swear. I'm fucking smart. Sometimes philosophers. What's the word? I'm going to stop. I'm just going to stop. So, um, I learned to lie super young. Like I'm talking wicked young. Cause my mom petrified me. I swear. She turned from like the mother that I loved into the fucking trenchable trenchable. And I was sitting there, little Matilda petrified of going to the chokey. Okay. So if you're going to be the trenchable and you're going to send us to the chokey, we might be a little fucking scared of you. Okay. That's all I'm saying. And now I have a little bit of trenchable syndrome, so I get it. It's a cycle that I have to break. Okay. <laughs> um, so basically when I was in kindergarten, I was five years old and all of my siblings were older, two sisters, one brother, they were all doing their homework. I drew an adorable, an adorable, I'm a fucking artist. Okay. I drew a, a balloon on the kitchen table in fucking pencil, bitch, fucking pencil. Let me just remind you guys it was pencil. Ah. And so 
It was a little balloon with a smiley face. This smile is adorable. And so um, when my mom was getting dinner ready and everything, she finally noticed my adorable little balloon friend suddenly appeared on the table. She freaked the fuck out and like basically lined us up like we were the Van Trap family, the Van Trap trap i don't know the sound of music shit except cut them in half and we were half of the van traps and so we're all sitting there in a row like did you do this did you do this i did not i did not did you do this did you do this amy did it amy did it except i would not take the blame because why would i again i'm fucking five years old petrified the anxiety was born an anxiety ridden star was born okay that day on balloon day so what ended up happening is my oldest two siblings got knocked out of the lineup just like Giselle in the ultimate housewives girls trip searching for the tequila bottle they were not suspects they were too old for this shit so me and my sister were the prime suspects it was clearly fucking me I don't know why they tortured both of us I was again too scared to admit it my sister was like I didn't do it we were grounded for two days in our room before I finally was like all right bitch I fucking did it like get me out of here and so then I had like an additional two days and I was just stuck alone in my room and again that's where my imagination was born and if you want to know why I'm okay being alone that is fucking why I had to from a young age so now all my friends are like Amy Amy you hang out with us hang out with us and I'm like eh maybe I'm fucking more fun by myself (laughs) sorry about it okay so moving on they talk more shit about Jameson's car I will never get over this fact that Jameson got his car for graduation like 17 plus years ago Sarah Sarah Foster she's like how old are you (laughs) um 17 plus years ago we'll just say that and Jameson still has the bow in the back seat the bow from graduation on the car 17 years ago in the backseat still. I can't. Then Jeff offers Jameson to buy him a car again. Jameson, Jameson, just accept it. Just accept it. Fucking take it. And oh my fucking God, as if we need any more signs that I should be hosting this goddamn after show. All right, so Jeff offers to get Jameson Jen Green's car which is a 2016 Audi. You guys, you can't write this shit. I am looking for a motherfucking Audi, an Audi in that age range. In that, I've literally been shopping for a 2016 Audi. I've been in that market for a month on car.com, on this.com, on every.com, on Craig's, blah, blah, blah. I'm looking everywhere for a 2016 Audi. What are the chances? Ever since Brandy said on an episode she'd rather have a nice car than a nice place, I was like, shit, maybe I should get a nicer car. So then I decided that in 2023, I want to be Amy in an Audi. And now here's Jeff offering a fucking 2006 Audi. Come on, man. But then womp womp. We find out it has a ton of miles, ton over a hundred thousand for 10,000. She's selling it for $10,000. Now, because of all my research, I have certain criteria, all of that. And all of mine had to be under 90,000, but 10,000, that's a good deal. I would say it's a good, I, like if I was Jameson, I would take it as Amy right here. I'll fucking pay 10 grand right now. I swear to God. I swear to God. Jeff Green. Ew, Jeff Green. Jen Green. Jeff Lewis. Somebody please. SOS. I'm sending out the signal. I will buy that car. And I know you'll probably want to charge me more, but please 10. It's fair, fair price. Um, But Also, I could see if you're like trying to help out a friend. Like when he said 10 grand, I was like, oh yeah. I mean, that makes sense for that car, but like 10 at the auction. So like, if you're going to do a, like a deal for a friend, I I thought I was just going to say, I could see an eight in front of it. Like Jameson, you get it for eight, five, Amy, you get it for 10 bitch. Um, so anyway, now they're like, no, fuck it. Jameson, you get it for 10. Amy, you never get anything in life. Oh yeah. Thank you. I know. Okay. So Jeff says that Zoila needs another facelift and then Megan, then he says mean things about our fucking beautiful Megan. Megan, you are an icon. Don't you ever forget it. Do you know how much fucking joy you brought me with? I ain't got no legs, bitch. I ain't got no legs. Come on. 
Come on, it's so fucking good. I just had to say that. We love you, Megan. Sarah says that she might have pushed some childhood trauma or insert whatever synonym here on her partner because he's super traditional and she somehow convinced him not to get married and just stay with her forever. Just stay with her forever. Love it, Sarah. Um, or however long. It doesn't have to be forever. However, whatever Sarah wants, okay? Whatever Sarah wants, she gets. Also, Sarah, I know you know this, but like you can change your mind at any point. Like I know it's kind of like Ariana and Tom, like, oh, 10 years where we, you know, like we are, to, we're married, we're together. Sorry, I should have never compared Ariana and Tom to Sarah and her man. I'm so sorry, Sarah. I'm sorry, all right? We're learning as we go, okay? I hope there's no Rachel in your life, okay? But all I was going to say is if you decide at any point that you want to get married, even if you guys are together for 80 years and on your 80th anniversary you want to get married, you go, girl. We're here to support you no matter what the fuck. And if anything ever happens, Jeff has amazing lawyers. So that is why you have friends in high places. Moving on to Shane going through a dating dry spell. Oh my God, Shane, Shane. Same, babe. Same. Which is crazy because March, it was like I couldn't be stopped. It was craziness in March. Like March madness. March madness. And now it's April sadness. I swear. I swear. Oh my God. That's so funny. March madness to April sadness. But for real, it well, actually, I hope April showers brings May flowers, aka a dick to bloom inside of me. All right, I want a dick to bloom inside of me. April showers, May flowers, dick blooming onion. How fucking poetic. Um, but honestly, it was just like fast and the furious for so long. And now everybody, like none of us want to date each other. No one's liking each other. No one, uh, you answer, but just for a little, like I never answered that kid about taking him to Beetlejuice again. He even asked, followed up. How is that play? I don't I, no. He was so boring. Everyone's boring. I just need a new life. Okay. So uh, speaking of actually Sarah, asks if Shane manifests what he wants in life. And Sarah, oh, I love her. Sarah's trying to be all serious. Oh, wait, can I also just say that I know the foster sister, Sarah and Aaron, because they've been on reality shows, like in the background of things, I feel like. I Or maybe they had their own, but I feel like Jeff would have brought that up. I just for some reason, Nicole Richie, I love Nicole Richie. And I feel like they, she had her own, reality show re a few years ago when they were on it. Like they're always around Nicole and I just, that crew seems so fucking fun. Okay. So, and House of Harlow, Nicole, oh my, it's so badass. Okay. So Sarah's trying to be serious, which does not work well on Jeff Lewis Live. And Jeff is just trying to find Shane sex. <laughs> and so, okay. In my notes, talk about me being psychic yet a fucking again. I, they were talking about manifesting, manifesting. And I write down, how do you manifest? Like I, people always talk about do this, do this, but I need to know I'm as smart as I am. I'm dumb as fuck. Like you need to literally spell it out for me sometimes. For example, boundaries, boundaries. My first therapist, she was like, you need to create boundaries. And I was like, what does that, what does it look, give, I need an example. Literally, what is a boundary? So for those who don't know, I will give you one. If I get anxiety driving with this one person and there's no need for me to have to drive with that person, like it's not, we're not carpooling to save the planet or anything like that. I'm just trying to be nice and spend more time with this person, but it, they cause me so much anxiety, then create a new boundary where you don't, you drive yourself. Okay. Just drive your fucking self for a little bit at least. And then you know, work on healing and maybe you, uh, maybe they can take some lessons and not be a monster behind the wheel. But you know, like actually like that's a boundary. Like I'm driving myself from now on. That's a boundary. Okay. So then how do you manifest? Talk about me being psychic. I write that. And then Jameson tells us, Jameson tells us, thank you, Jameson. Literally. Thank you. Scary Sherry says that in order to manifest, you don't say you want, you say you have. So even if like, I want a giant bank account. No, I don't, bitch. I fucking have a giant bank account. Hey, ow, money in the bank, uh, money in the bank, and I put it in the face, and I'll shove it in your face. Ew, no. Remember when Scott Disick on Keeping Up with the Kardashians actually stuck money down a waiter's throat? That was the most disgusting scene in reality television I have ever seen. So now moving on to the most magical place, 
most magical place in the world. Jameson's going to Disney this week and he's going to a new ride in Toonstown. Toonstown. He just wants to eat a Mickey beignet and all I know is he is eating better than me today. But actually, I have a smoothie from yesterday. Is it okay to drink smoothies a day later? Like, it was like banana and spinach and peanut butter and stuff. But like, doesn't banana like ferment overnight? Is that, I don't know. All right. Anyway, no one gives a fuck. Sarah says, Jeff, no more fast pass or private tours for Monroe at Disney. She needs to wait in lines. <clears throat> As somebody who waits in lines. Fuck that. Fuck that. Fuck that. Fuck that. Fuck. Worst advice ever. Where lines suck. Traffic sucks. Take helicopters. Pay for private tours. If you got it, spend it. I motherfucking would. I would. I would. No, there's other ways you can make kids do, have them do chores. Don't wait in lines. Fuck lines. Okay. So then we talk about a new dating term, zombieing. Zombieing. When someone you've dated goes quiet for a while, then starts hitting you back up like they rose from the dead. You guys, I am so motherfucking confused. Have we not talked about zombieing for years on Jeff Lewis Live? Am I going crazy? I know I'm crazy, but am I actually going is like what I'm so confused why nobody on Jeff Lewis was like, yeah, this isn't a new dating term. We've been talking about this for the ages. Like, I'm I'm so confused. Like, I literally thought that Scott zombied him. I thought we talked, I thought. There, I, I swear all my life we've been talking about zombieing for years on Jeff Lewis and the fact that me, we reported this news article and not one if, not one if person in that studio said, hey, guys, we were ahead of the curve. For once, the Trumps were ahead of the curve and we've been talking about this. No one said that. I'm so confused. What was I, did I just create that in my head? Probably. There's a lot I create in that shit, but, but speaking of zombieing, I recently, this happens all the time. I recently just had a guy come back after three years of not talking three years. He came back in full force. And not only that, but had the audacity to then ask me why I never respond or barely respond to him right now in today's day and age, not three years ago when I was actually interested in responding to you. Now I literally don't give a fuck about your left pinky toe. Like I don't care. I don't care. I got enough new shit in this brain. Clearly there's a lot going on. So but also that kid, he stopped talking to me because the first time we had sex, I gave him a hickey and he freaked the fuck out. This is what I'm saying. I've had so many weird ass experiences. I can't not share like who the fuck gets that angry about a hickey. He was walking around his house like the beat. It was the beast, B beauty and the beast. And I was the beauty for once in the story. <laughs> No, I was literally like Belle, like shivering under the covers. And he was walking around his house like, whoa, whoa, looking in mirrors, getting ice packs, Googling how to get rid of hickeys. And I'm like, you are the most petrifying person. But he also had anger issues. And I knew he had a gun in the house, which is TMI. But like, I have, I just get really scared. And my anxiety, I'm told you I'm on medication now. Probably can't tell, but I swear I am. And so my anxiety, I just, I, I just like stayed I stayed for a little and then I was like, okay, I'm going to go. Good luck with the hickey. Also hickeys have been a thing. It's like my trademark and I hate it. I don't like giving them. I hate getting them. I, I, all right. Let me just say, I love giving them and I love getting them. I hate the mark that it leaves behind. I wish you could just have a neck free for all and I could be a vampire and no repercussions. However, it has caused a lot of turmoil because obviously I look like a hussy. If I'm uh, one kid, I had to meet his family the next day. And now I look like a fucking hussy. Okay. Well, I mean, if the shoe fits, call me Cinderella. And so then if it's not meeting the family, it's friends, it's this or that. He has to go to work. It like, it's not cute to have hickeys. I get it. If you ask me right now, sitting next to you to give you a hickey, I would not know how. It's like something comes over me in the moment. I'm a passionate hickey giver. I don't know. I don't know. All right. All right. There's a lot of passion inside of me. What can I say? And on that note, again, I've been so passionate about Jeff Lewis live the past four weeks and I love him so much. I love all the Trumps. I've had so much fun recapping you guys. I will be back with a Pete and Sebastian show. I promise if you don't watch it, you'll love it. If not, I'm the same girl. We'll be having the same motherfucking fun. And you can always email me at splashesasspodcast at gmail.com. Again, forever thank you to the Jeff Lewis Live family. They didn't even untag my Instagram pics. Like, they were great, you know? Or maybe I just 
can still see them. Maybe it's just untagged for the masses. Whatever, whatever. I don't give a fuck. I love you so fucking much, okay? I love him. I love you. I love Scott and I guess do too. <laughs> um, okay. On that note, we will be back on Wednesday with a new episode of Splash Assass. Tell your friends. I love you guys so much. Have the best weekend ever. Love you. Bye. Splash. Splash, splash. Splash Assass. Splash Assass.